Connecting research in, in Earth, ocean, and the environment is absolutely critical. Our whole world is based on connections right now. And in this department, we study everything from the deepest oceans to the oldest rocks. And what we're really interested in is how those different things are all connected to each other. Before we had our uh, combined department here at UNC, we had, we had separate departments. And we didn't always interact as much as we could have. And we were really missing opportunities to study things between the continents and the ocean, right? So all of these amazing coastal areas that are so dynamic and changing so much, uh, we're doing a better job now of, of understanding those environments. Well, it's really important to connect research between the Earth, ocean, and the environment because essentially the environment is a product of interconnected biological, physical, and chemical processes. So if we can better understand the Earth system if we maintain those connections as we're performing scholarly work rather than studying them in isolation. My area of expertise is what we call global hydrology. So I'm interested in understanding the water cycle, but not at the scale of uh, your local watershed. Instead, I'm interested in the water cycle at the scale of the whole globe. The Surface Water and Ocean Topography, or SWAT satellite mission, is a satellite that NASA is using to better understand Earth's water. And so if we break it down, surface water, that means rivers and lakes. Ocean, that's obvious, and then topography, all of those different water features have topography to them. So the ocean actually has higher and lower areas. Rivers and lakes go up and down. And what NASA is using the satellite to do is give us a better understanding of how the Earth's water changes in space and time. And what that means is that we're gonna be able to see these features oftentimes for the first time in 3D. So like we'll be able to see how a flood wave moves down a river in three dimensions. I study natural disasters and the way that they impact communities um, and the ways in which the environment and human decisions are changing over time to exacerbate disaster impacts. So one of the things that we've seen in our research is that um, climate change is definitely exacerbating extreme rainfall during hurricane events and this is driving uh, more extreme flooding in the coastal zone as rainfall processes combine with uh, storm surge and high river flows. Um, but we're also seeing that uh, development patterns like urban development, um, especially in ex-urban areas, are an even greater of driver of future flood risks in coastal areas. My area of expertise is to use molecular tools, and by that I mean tools that are able to detect different types of DNA or RNA or genetic material from different types of organisms, such as bacteria and viruses, in the environment to answer questions that are related to both humans and the ecosystem. We're doing research on the die-off of oysters in marine environments by really going out in the field and working with farmers that are the ones that grow the oysters in our estuaries and along our coastlines. And what we're doing with them is to work over windows of time where we see extreme events like extreme temperature or uh, rainfall events to identify the times when these mortality events are occurring and to try to pair those windows of time with the agents of disease like the bacteria that we're tracking in the oysters. And we've taken those tools that we use to track the DNA and RNA of different bacteria and viruses, and we've been able to apply them in wastewater to protect public health. My lab is specifically investigating how bacteria um, use unique molecular weapons to kill each other as they compete for a limited uh, space and resources. The way that we study this is by using model systems. So our lab actually uses the Hawaiian bobtail squid and its bacterial symbiont, which is a bioluminescent marine bacterium. And we study how these marine bacteria actually fight with each other to uh, colonize host sites in the squid. This molecular weapon that these bioluminescent bacteria use is actually found in a lot of uh, other bacteria species that are associated with humans, including pathogens. So the things that we can learn by studying this squid model system is actually um, can be translated to understanding how pathogens or even human-associated bacteria might compete for the human. I am a tectonic driving petrologist. I study rock to answer geochemical and tectonic uh, fundamental questions and processes. Subduction zones are super important uh, for our planet and there are areas in our planet where we have a lot of fluids. And those fluids are very relevant uh, for how we exchange 
elements between the exterior and the interior of the planet. Through our studies, we have learned that uh, uh, these fluids have different compositions and they come from different depths. And they play a very important role in the generation of magmas, but also in the exchange of elements between the cross and the mantle. I think people should join our department because there is research for everyone here. No matter your interests, there's someone here who does research that I think you would re find really satisfying and enjoy. There's also a great graduate student community. There are between 60 and 70 graduate students in our department, and because we all do such different work, I'm constantly learning about a new topic from my friends and colleagues. As a department, we're really just getting started. We're uh, building a new graduate program that's gonna combine earth science and, and, and marine sciences, and Ultimately, I think what we want to do is we want to be the place in North Carolina and really beyond that you come if you want to understand these interdisciplinary connections between continental processes and oceanic processes.